Hello and welcome to this video on the ICND2 series. In this video, we will be talking about uh, Ether channels. We're going to look at what an Ether channel is. We're going to look at what the Ether channel protocol, and finally, uh, we're going to look at a configuration of Ether channels. So let's get started. An Ether channel is a protocol that is used for bundling links together. So, for instance, if we have two switches, we have switch A and switch B. Now, because they're the core switches of the network, we have four links between them. So we have links connected to Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 all the way to Fast Ethernet 0 slash 4. So if you remember from Spanning Tree, what we're going to do is that we're going to find the root bridge. And in this case, we're going to determine which one has a lower bridge priority. They both have the default bridge priority, which is 32768. They're going to pick the one with the lower MAC address. So let's assume this is the root bridge. And then we're going to find the root port. So we assume that all the links have the same speed and they all have the same cost to the root bridge. And since they're all connected to the same bridge, they're all going to have the same bridge ID. So the only way to break the tie is to use the port ID, which is a port priority. And we know that the default port priority is 128. And the next thing to break the tie will be the port number. In this case, this is going to be the root port because it's fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is the smallest. So the next thing we are going to do is to find the designated ports. And since it's the root bridge, all the ports will be designated ports. So we're going to have designated port here, designated port, designated port, and designated port. And because of all these ports will be block ports, a block port and a block port. So in this case, we have four links. And effectively, all these three links are going to be blocked. And the only link that's going to be used is to be the first link. So we have a case where, except something goes very wrong with any of the ports, we're never going to use the three, these three links. And so we're going to be wasting these interfaces and these cables. Well, with Ether Channel, we can do something about that. So what we're going to do is put all these interfaces in one logical bundle. And in that case, they're all going to be treated just like one interface. So instead of having four interfaces, what we're going to have is two switches. And they're just going to have one bundle. So that's how Ether Channel works. So if we have directly connected links together and you need to uh, bundle them to have higher capacity, then you can use Ether channels. So in this case, now, if you have one gig link connecting all these interfaces together, then in theory, you're going to have a four gig link instead of having just one gig and all the other ports being blocked. And because Ether channels are supported by servers, you can actually have Ether channel between a switch and a server. So you can have two links going to a server. Let's say this is a web server. And you can bundle them together to get an Ether channel, and they're actually going to act as one link. So you can increase the capacity of links going to the server, and that helps us to remove bottlenecks from this links because you have quite a lot of clients trying to reach one server. So you can have clients all across the network trying to reach one server. And server has a better connection to the network than the client, and that increases the speed which we serve as a client. So that's a good thing. The other thing you need to know is that Ether channels can be used for up to eight links. So when you have Cisco devices, you can use Ether channels for two links, for four links, for eight links. Now let's look at Ether channel protocols. Basically, there are three kinds of protocols you can use for Ether channel. Actually, there are two kinds of protocols. One is PAGP, and the other one is LACP. But it's also possible not to use any of the protocols to negotiate the Ether channel and just send them on. It's almost like DTP. Remember in DTP, you can have dynamic desirable, the dynamic auto, and you can just turn it on. Same thing with Ether channel. So instead of negotiating an Ether channel, you just turn it on. But the problem with turning it on is that uh, we turn Ether channel on here and forget to turn on each channel on the other end. This will just believe it's an ether channel and will start loading balancing and the other side would not be expecting this kind of packet and so the network would um so the ether channel would come down the physical interface with two would have issue fissures but when you use pack p or lacp you actually negotiate and try to form an ether channel and if they don't form an ether channel the physical interface can still work now the first thing you need to know about pack p is that it's cisco proprietary and the reason is because cisco set the standard first before it became an industry standard and you can either set ports to either desirable or auto. And desirable means that they really want to join the Ether channel just like in DDP, while auto means that they don't really care. So if the two ends on the links are set to auto, the Ether channel would not form. If one is set to desirable, then it would form. 
and if both are set to desirable, the Ether channel would also form. With LACP, you have active and passive, so it's just like desirable and auto. If both ends are assigned to active, it's going to work. If one is set to active, it's going to work. But if you have both ends set to passive, it's not going to work. So that's the difference between PACP and LACP. Now we're going to look at configuring Ether channels in a second. And then you have to specify whether you're using the PACP or the LACP or just turn it on. But it's advisable to use uh, one of the protocols so that you're sure that the negotiation goes on. Now remember that you can connect Ether channels to servers. If we're going to use servers, you have to use the LACP protocol. And that's because most times the servers are not manufactured by Cisco. So it needs to use the industry standard, which is LACP. Now let's look at configuring Ether channels. Now Ether channel is one of the protocols that are really funny to configure because you really need to mind the order. So for instance, if I'm configuring Ether channel, I'd rather shut down the interfaces first before I configure it. Now this is not a law by Cisco, but from my experience, the best way to do it. You can shut down the interfaces first. The way you shut down interfaces is that you have to make sure all the attributes of the physical interfaces match. Say, for instance, if I want to configure fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 2, I have to make sure that their speed match. They're duplex match, so uh, they are both using speed 100 Mbps. And they're both using full duplex. They're both in the same VLANs. They're both running the same switch port mode with access or trunk. And all the physical interfaces match. In fact, I would advise that you use what is called the interface range command to configure. So what you could do is use the interface and the way the interface range works is that use interface range and you say something like fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, leave a space, put a dash, and go to 2. So it's going to configure both interfaces at the same time instead of configuring them individually. And this way you can make sure that the configuration matches on the interfaces. And when you set the physical attributes on the interface and the interfaces are configured, when they use the channel group command, and what the channel group command does is that it actually creates a user channel and puts it on the port that, of the ether channel. So if I use the channel group command here, it's going to put uh, both interfaces on fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 in the Ether channel. And it's going to go to a new interface, which is called a port channel. And of course, you have to bring back the interfaces up so you no shut the interfaces. And then all of the changes, like if you want to make any change after you've configured the Ether channel, you have to make them under the port channel. So you just go to interface, port channel, and use a number, so maybe one or whatever. Uh, so whatever config you want to put, you put it under the port channel. So for instance, if you want to say switch port trunk encapsulation, these are switch port trunk allowed VLAN status. Anything that has to do with any other configuration, you put it under the port channel. And that's how it's configured on Ether channel. So this is Ether channels with a semicolon, just Ether channels. So now let's go to the command line and see how Ether channels are being configured. So we'll take an example. And we'll configure Ether channel between two switches. And we're going to take three ports into Ether channel. So we're connected to switch one right now. And switch one is connected to switch two on three interfaces, which is uh, the fast Ethernet 0 slash 13, fast Ethernet 0 slash 14, and fast Ethernet 0 slash 15. So to configure Ether channel, what we're going to do is we're going to check the states of those interfaces. So let's say, uh, let's show IP interface brief. So show IP interface brief and they're shut down which is good so we have fast Ethernet 0 slash 13 14 and 15 shut down so what we're going to do is that we are just going to go and use the interface range command and say interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 13 to 15 interface range fast Ethernet 0 slash 13 to 15 so now we are in the interface range so we are first going to set the encapsulation. So we're going to say we'll switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. And we say switch port mode trunk. And then we're going to make it join the channel group. So we're going to say channel group. And we can use a question mark. So we're, we are just going to give it a number, say one. And I'm going to say mode. And remember with mode, we can either have on or we can use PACP or LACP where you can have desirable. So just question mark, we can see we can have on or we can use desirable where we can enable PACP unconditionally or 
uh, auto where we enable PACP, but it's in the passive mode. We're going to use LACP. So we're going to use PACP and we're going to make it desirable. So we're going to say desirable. Now you can notice that it's creating a port channel now. The next thing we can do is to use the channel protocol command, but it's a really useless command because remember, if we did this and set the mode to be desirable, it's already using PACP, so we don't need to actually set the channel protocol to PACP. But if you want to, you can set it. I mean, it would make no sense for you to set it to LACP since you're already using desirable. So uh, they're just going to say PACP, but it doesn't matter. Now, let's exit. To verify Ether channel, we can say show Ether channel and use summary. And then you need to be familiar with these codes here. D means it's down. S means it's layer 2 Ether channel. U means that it's in use. So here we have SD, and that means it's down is layer 2. Now, the reason it's down is because the other side is not up yet. So we have to do is configure the other side. So we're going to go over and go to switch 2 and configure it to, as an Ether channel 2. So switch 2 again. Again, we do the same thing. Go into the interface range command. And use fast Ethernet 0 slash 13 to 15. We're going to make sure it's a trunk. So switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q and switch port mode trunk. Then we're also going to make it join the channel group. Now, it doesn't have to be one, but I'm just going to make it one. It can be another number on this other switch. It doesn't matter. The number you use is a number that the port channel that's created would have. So we just use one so we don't get confused. And we're going to say mode. Now, we can make it desirable auto. I'm just going to say desirable. And it's created a port channel. Then we have to bring up the interfaces, so no shut. We're going to go to the other side, and we bring up the interfaces. So comp T, interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 13 to 15 no shut and we can see that the line protocol for interface port channel 1 changed to up so if we uh, show ether channel summary now we can see it's S and U, which means it's a layer 2 Ether channel, and it's in use. And we can now see that each of the interfaces have P, which is means that they're both bundled in the port channel. So everything is fine. And this is kind of output that you want to get when you configure Ether channel. So we're going to go back to switch to and check if the Ether channel is working. And of course, we're going to show Ether channel summary. And again, we can see that it's SU, which means it's a layer 2 protocol. And it's in use. And we can see that all our ports are participating because they're all P's, which means that they are bundled in the port channel. Now, the last thing that we need to check for in Ether channel is to go into config mode and use the command port channel load balance. Now, this command helps you to select the load balancing algorithm. You can usually use the destination IP address, the destination MAC address. Uh, the source and destination IP address, the source and destination MAC address, the source IP address, or the source MAC address. So what it means is that if you're using the load balancing and using the source MAC address, this means that when the switch gets a frame, it's going to perform a hash. It's going to select one of the interfaces to send the frame using the MAC address. It means that all frames are sourced to be the same MAC address, we'll actually use the same port. So if we use source MAC address, uh, that means that as, as long as the frames come from the same MAC address, they're going to use the same interface. So, for instance, if using fast Ethernet 0 slash 13, all the frames are going to use slash fast Ethernet 0 slash 13. And it's using fast Ethernet 0 14 for another MAC address. All the frames from that source MAC address are going to use fast Ethernet 0 slash 14. So, we're going to go on the other end so we reach switch one. We're going to make it use the source MAC address too. We're going to say port channel, load balance source MAC address. So this adds configuration on the command line. So in this video, we've been able to look at uh, what an Ether channel is. We looked at the various kinds of Ether channel protocols, the PACP and the LACP, learned how to configure the Ether channel on the command line. Thank you very much for watching.